Hi guys, hope you all are well. And I'm going to stay he here for now and then when I'm done reading my scriptures, then I'll go back. Um, uh, I hope you guys had a wonderful day, went to church and, and did all that wonderful stuff. And today's message will, will be called Out of the Shallow and Into the Deep. Um, it was like a download God gave me last night. But before I get into that, let's pray. Father, I thank you for this time together. I thank you for what you're doing. And I thank you for what you will continue to do, Lord Jesus. Endow me with your power from on high. Speak, Lord, what you've, what you've spoken to me inside me. And, oh God, help us to come out of the shallow and into the deep, oh God. And cause us to know that it's a process. Father, we need you. We There's so much surface level stuff going on. And in the deepness of our hearts, Lord, we are struggling. And we don't know where to go, Lord God. Teach us. Remind us who we are and who you are. In the name of Jesus, I pray, Lord God, that you will speak something that will change the world of God. Hide me out behind the cross and use me as a vessel. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I apply your blood to this message of God. Amen. And amen. So guys, um, I want to start with reading two scriptures. And then I will, I will uh, back up and then continue. Um, but first, I want to read two scriptures. And I'm reading from the NIV, the New International Version. My first scripture is Hebrews 5, verse 13. It says, anyone who lives on milk, still being an infant, is not acquainted with the, with the teaching about righteousness. And my second scripture is 1 Corinthians 13 verse 11 it said when I was a child I talked as a child okay when I was a child I talked like a child I thought like a child I reasoned like a child but when I became a man or woman I put I put the childish, I put the ways of my child, I put the ways of my childhood behind me. So let me read that again. When I, when I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. But when I became a man, a man or woman, I put the ch my childhood I put the childhood ways behind me. And that's 1 Corinthians 13, verse 11. Let me just get this down here.
Um, so now let me back up and so I can start the sermon. Now you can see my face. And now I'm going to, in typical Rachel style, I'm going to sing a song called Shallow. It's from uh, A Star is Born, the um, soundtrack, uh, the movie. Uh, directed by Bradley Cooper and Lady Gaga. Um, not um, a movie directed by Bradley Cooper with starring Bradley Cooper and Lady Gaga. Um, it's called Shallow. Now keep in mind I'm not a singer and this is supposed to be a duet. But now it's just going to be me. Alright, here we go. Tell me something, girl. Are you happy in this modern world? Or do you need more? Is there something else you're searching for? I'm falling. In the good times, I'll find myself longing. For change, and in the bad times, I fear myself. Tell me something, boy. Are you tired trying to fill that void, or do you need more? Is it hard keeping it so hardcore? I'm Fallen in the good times, I find myself longing for change, and in the bad times, I fear myself. I'm a pretty thing, watch as I tear in all the real good things. Crash terrible version of it um, <laughs> but um, I I I despair I despair of the world today because we have things at such a surface level we go to work we go to school we we carry on with our daily lives and we take a moment to pray but we don't um, we don't really take God in and what he's calling for is basically his church to start taking him in start by going deeper with the Lord and I, I'm not saying deeper as in spooky I'm saying he wants to reveal himself in a new way to us and we need to be ready for this and he's saying time out for the bait for the baby um for the baby attitude 
where we just go to church and get the pastor to feed us, feed us, feed us. We need to grow up, church, because there is a world that doesn't only need Jesus, but they need us to be him. All, all around us, church, are people that are hurting, people that are in pain, people that are suffering. But we're too caught up in ourselves to see it. And the Lord is saying, get away from the shallow. He said, I want to take you deeper. I want to take you to a deeper place. I want to take you past your issues, but you won't submit yourself to me enough to go to a deeper place. See, we all long to go to a deeper place as Christians, but to go to a deeper place with the Lord and with ourselves, we need to go to a process, through a process. And sometimes the process isn't so pretty. And, and I totally believe that God is longing to reveal himself. There is not an issue that the Lord doesn't have a solution for that the Lord doesn't have answers for. But the problem is we're so involved in like social media and the mundane thing of our and the mundane things of our our lives that we don't see that God wants to take us deeper and higher. And I'm not saying just to sit around all day and uh, meditate in a, ben in a vegetative state. When I say go deeper, get to the place with God where he can reveal him, his mysteries to you. I was reading somewhere in the scriptures um, that he's really longing to reveal his self, his mysteries to his righteous church. But we are so busy with um, uh, shallow things that we are afraid to go any deeper. Because I think part of the reason why we're afraid to go deeper is that um, when we go deeper, we don't only experience him on a deeper level, on a more profound level, but we can experience ourselves in good or bad ways. And I think, and I think busyness or shallowness or just staying surface level keeps us from really delving into the deep issues of our hearts. And I think sometimes, I think most times for most of us, it's scary to, to delve into that deep um, place with God. And I think what, what, when you think of really deep Christians, sometimes you have a really negative connotation about people that are mean and not very nice. It's like we have to go deep with God and they're selfish and they're rude and they're just hard to get along with. And the Lord is not meaning that. The Lord is saying he wants to reveal himself on a deeper level to us. I I tend to believe he has um, a solution for every problem the world is facing. Problems that we don't even think he cares about, like global warming, like um, the whole um, same-sex agenda going on, the whole issue other issues that we don't even know 
every terrorist issue and government issue and everything our education system why certain cultures seem to succeed in education versus why certain cultures don't um, he has solutions for all those issues but he will keep us busy with mundane things because if we were to get to the deep things of God um, and I'm not talking about just spiritual things but if we were to get deeper with God and get actual revelation from God about these issues and other issues that I don't even know or didn't even mention the we would be unstoppable as the church so one of the devil's tools is two of the devil's tools are busyness and ignorance and sometimes busyness because if we're kept busy and distracted with our own lives and with our own uh, issues and with our own problems we don't even want to think about the deeper world problems that are going on um, we don't want to uh, think of ways how to end world hunger we don't want to think of ways how to end terrorism and how to end uh, teen suicide and the eating disorder crisis and uh, all those issues that are going on in the world um, we'd rather just um, keep up with social media uh, who's doing what who's going on what vacation who's in a relationship who is uh, dating who who is doing this and who is doing that when the Lord is saying there are deeper issues to face there are things that I want the church to tackle that they are not tackling. Um, I've heard somebody say years ago, sometimes, sometimes church is used as a drug that we just put a needle in, put the word in, and get, get a little happy, and then we go back to our regular lives. No church is supposed to be a healing station a fueling station where we go out where we get fueled and then we go out to proclaim the gospel and i think all, the number one answer to all these issues that i talked about is jesus christ and i think if we were to get down in the word and get down with the Lord, we'd get we'd have solutions for all these um, issues. A lot of people think the church is just another religion, that Christianity is just another religion like Buddhism or uh, Islam or anything uh, Hinduism Sikhism um, but we have the answers we have the answers for all the world's problems and and because he's he's kept us busy we remain ignorant on what to pray for ignorant not in a negative way necessarily ignorant in in a way that we don't know we don't know what the issues are we don't know what's going on in the other side of the world we don't know what to pray for and I think if we just take a little time to go a little deeper each day and say God what's on your heart we often um, talk about what's on our hearts and what we're dealing with. I wonder when's the last time 
we've asked God, Lord, what are it, what are the issues that you are concerned about? What are the issues that I should be praying for? What are the who are the people that I should be praying for? What countries that um should I be praying for? I think um I think the devil has lulled the church in into a false sense of security. Like, if I'm okay, you're okay, that's all. But no, that's not all. There are big battles to fight, saints. There are big wars to fight in the spirit. But we're too busy falling asleep in church, singing our little songs, and um, having a little 20-minute word and then getting shot in the arm or um, sn snorting up our spiritual drugs and then going home happy while the world is dying. The world is dying, church, and we have the answers. We are the light of the world. We are a city. We cannot be hid, but we don't really believe that. We don't really, we really believe God and His Word. Um, I was talking to a friend about my, um, about my medical condition, and I said something to her. Um, something like I forget what I said, uh, and she corrected me. She said, "Don't say that." Um, I said something kind of ne negative. I said, well, um, I'll have diabetes for the rest of my life. She said, no, don't say that. Say you're healed. Say you're restored. And she put me in my place. And she was right to do that. I think that we've just lulled ourselves. And... We don't really believe the Word of God. We don't really believe the Word of God when He says we are more than conquerors through Christ. We don't really believe the Word of God when He said, when He says we are healed. We don't really believe the Word of God when He said we are the light of the world. Yeah, yeah, we're the light of the world. But he didn't, he didn't mean we're the light of the world on Sunday in between uh, 12 and 3 or 12 and 2. He meant we are the light of the world. You know that co-worker that is driving you crazy? You have the answer for him. You know that situation at work? that they can't figure out God has the answer so instead of stressing out or complaining about, about it get down on your knees get down in prayer and ask God God what do you want me to do about this situation um, reveal yourself in this situation the church has the answers for every problem we we should be sitting at tables and governments and and speaking life and speaking strength and not in a religious way but in a wise way so that people will say oh my gosh i don't know where she got that from um but and you would smile to yourself and say oh yeah she got that from jesus uh, I got, I got that from Jesus. That's what you would say. But instead, we keep quiet and just do our little churchy thing on the weekend, where, well, where God has just called us to go out and preach the gospel, not preach the gospel through, through standing at the street corner. And people do that. But not necessarily that, but preach the gospel with your life. Go deeper with God with your life. 
open your word and say, Lord, what would you want to say? And there'll be a time when you do that enough, when you don't even have to open your word, where the word will get so much into you, it will just start spewing out of you, and you'll be talking to one of your secular friends. And before you you know it, you'll be spewing um, life to them. You'll be having answers for them. And I think we're, we're uh, depending too much on our political figures. And we have the answers for the world if we would just get deeper and get down in this word and get intimate with God. Um, the thing about intimacy is you need to have penetration to make anything, to make a natural baby. So if what we need to do then, if we need to have penetration to create a natural baby, which means uh, uh, semen and egg coming together to create a natural baby, um, we need to have, we need to penetrate the heart of God to create spiritual babies. But to, in order to do that, we need to go beyond the surface. We need to go deeper. We need to start praying. We need to start asking God, not only for spiritual stuff, but we need to start asking God for strategy to deal with the world's issues because he has the answer and what the more you get into your word is the more that the word will get into you and you'll understand your purpose you'll understand what you're called to do you'll understand what he's destined for you but if we stay on the surface level like hi how are you oh no i'm fine the lord can't move us to where he wants us to move us i believe that the church is the most powerful entity in the world but until we believe it and stop taking a back seat nothing will change until she gets her wings and knows how she can fly, the church will just still remain gathered in our hugs on Sunday morning or doing whatever to our particular ministry. Uh, to our particular ministry. I don't think God will be um, fully pleased. He's, he's, he's pleased with a lot of ministries, a lot of ministries are getting getting good work, but I, I tend not to believe that he will be fu fully pleased until we get this, our ministry, your ministry, this church, that church, until we get rid of that and start calling ourselves the body of Christ. The way I look at the body of Christ is very different than um, other uh, other people. The way I look at the body of Christ is God is the CEO of the body of Christ, like the chief executive officer, like everything comes from him. And then each pastor is a director, is is an officer under him with people that they lead, but the general body is all together. But we're, we're operating like we are separate organizations. We are operating that the pastor is the head and, and who is under him is whether ministers or elders or whoever's under him, we work for him. But it's not true. We all, the CEO of the church is God. 
the CEO of the Church of God, and each pastor is a director for their own city. But it's all the same body. But until we start looking at ourselves as the same body, we cannot go deeper. He, he so wants to reveal strategies, not, not, not just for spiritual things, but for natural things. He has strategies for everything, but we're so busy with our own lives that we don't even ask, we don't even think he has strategies for some things, which he does, and he's looking for someone to pour it out to. And I, and I believe that he's looking for a remnant to pour out his spirit. He says, in the last days, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And I, and I so sincerely believe that he wants to pour out his spirit, pour out his strategy, pour out himself to people who are listening, to people who are praying, to people who have their ears to the ground. I think not enough people have their ears to the ground. We're believers and we love Jesus, but there's a time to get beyond that. There's a time to stop praying for just issues, our own issues, and start praying for world issues, like I said before, to find out what's in God's heart, God's mind, God's spirit. I think, I think he's so desperate to pour out himself, but it's hard to find trusted believers who he can share his strategy with, who he can share himself with, who he can share his intimate thoughts and his intimate solutions. He has solutions up in the heavens that he can't reveal to anyone because we are too immature. We need to grow up. We need to grow up and understand that this world is dying without Christ. That this world needs an answer and the answer is Jesus we don't really believe the word of God when he says we are the answer, we are the light, we are the solution. He created us, he saved us, not just so we can be, um, not just so we can be, go to heaven, but, we, but he saved us more just so we can be a solution to the world's problem, problems. He, he saved us not for um, just salvation, but he saved us for solution. And we are the solutions. We are the light. We have, we have what the world needs. And he wants us to, and he wants us to really get down deep and dig. He wants us to get down deep and dig. And all those little issues that you're worried about, when you get down deep and dig and expose those um, bigger areas, those larger concerns of the world, he'll take care of your bigger issues. He will not leave you forsaken. But if you keep on stressing out about issues and not caring that the world needs you, he can't use you in the way he wants to. He wants to have free, re free reign in the world, but we, as the church, we're holding on too tight. He wants us to dig deep. He wants us to be intimate. He wants us to actually produce fruit and he just so wants to pour out himself he's saying beloved I would love I'm longing I'm 
I'm seeking, I'm, I'm endeavoring to pour up myself. Open up yourself and let me pour into you. Let me solve all, all those issues, all those little issues that you think are something so that you can focus on the bigger issues of the world so that you can focus about how to end uh, child hunger so that you can focus about how to end all this all this violence that is going on in the world he so wants to pour out himself his spirit upon all flesh Holy Spirit teach us what you what you desire what you need we are available to you God and I pray Lord God that you'll take us deeper and make us ready and show us the process to go deeper in our own in our own lives because we understand God that going deeper with you is a process and that you long to show us teach us restore us help us God and show us your glory in a new way pour out your spirit God pour out your glory give us strategy God on how to lead this world this hurting broken world to you father i praise you and i lift you up in the name of jesus amen and amen okay guys i'll see you later bye lord we're available to you our will we give to you we'll do what you say to use us Lord, to show someone the way and enable us to say our storage is empty and we
Take care, guys. See you next week. Bye. Love ya.